I get asked a lot if the Xtool D1 is any good and if it's really worth the money. Well, if it wasn't, I wouldn't have two of them. So I'll go over these a little bit, coming up. I'm Roger, welcome to the shop. What I talk about here is the Xtool D1 lasers. I've done uh, videos on these before. I have two of them. Uh, right now they are both set up to do cutting. I've got some orders for some Christmas items that is going to require cutting out of two and three millimeter plywood, doing some layered things. I may be putting a video up on how to do one of those coming up here soon. But what I also want to mention is Xtool is also coming out with a Galvo laser. And if you don't know what that is, it's a galvanometer, 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 you know, a Galvo laser. It's Galvo motors. It's extremely fast. It, this thing will run up to 300 millimeters a second. So if let's say you're going to want to engrave on a business card or something, an aluminum business card, you can do it in under 60 seconds. It, it's just screaming fast. And instead of me going over all the little points of it, so here's a video you can watch made by Xtool. And I'm not sponsored by them or anything on this. I just think this thing is really cool. This is Xtool F1, an ultra-fast IR and diode laser engraver at hand. With a maximum working speed of 3,000 millimeters per second, F1 finished project super fast. Turn your imagination into creation in a blink of an eye. F1 has a 2-watt infrared laser and a 10-watt blue laser. The blue laser is used to engrave more common materials, while the infrared one is for metal and plastic engraving. With an F1 in hand, only sky's the limit. Powerful 10-watt laser can also make crafts with laser cutting. F1 utilizes an electric focus adjustment system and has a live preview feature, enabling you to easily complete the engraving, no matter how tiny the objects are. Assembled with an industry-level galvanometer system, F1 has a 0.003 millimeter engraving accuracy bringing out every detail flawlessly. To make it an indoor engraving machine, F1 features an enclosed design and is accompanied by a purifier, keeping you away from the smoke and smell issue out of engraving. With an F1 in hand, you can create whatever you want. Make a unique mug and tumbler. You can prepare for your custom orders as fast as you can. Or you can even make engraving on demand as a custom service of your gift shop. Xtool F1, ultra fast IR and diode laser engraver. Okay, so doesn't that look neat? And I'm hoping to be able to get my hands on one of those when they come out sometime in 2023. Because I think with the combination of the infrared and the uh, blue diode laser, it's going to be a fun laser to play with. So if both of these are the Xtool D1s, why do they look different? Well, one is older than the other. One I've done some mods on. Actually, I've done mods on both of them. But one of them has uh, a few different kinds of mods. I'll get over here a little bit and I'll kind of bring you in and I'll show you some of the things I've done with these to make them more useful for my purposes. Okay, this one here is the one I had first, and I added a drag chain to it, as you can see over here on the uh, right-hand side, and I added my own homemade air assist, little bracket here, I made my own nozzle, works very, very good. And it has a uh, honeycomb board underneath it, which is actually sitting on top of a spoil board, and this one is sitting on one little set of risers, because I need a little bit of extra clearance for some three-quarter inch material, I was... Uh, doing some engraving on. I don't cut three-quarter material, but I do engrave on it. This one here is uh, several months newer than the uh, other one. I have not put a drag chain on it yet. It is something I hope to do this winter sometime. This does not get in the way, and I primarily use this one for my rotary. And I put the risers on it and rise it up and set the rotary in here. This one, that's what this one is primarily for. I've got the uh, RA2 very, very neat little rotary setup. I'll have, have some videos on that coming up here sometime. 
And I added air assist on this, but this is the X-Tool factory air assist. Not the homemade variety. It works just like the homemade one, but this one was a lot less work. Okay, you'll see this has a honeycomb board underneath it. It's from X-Tool. I bought it from them. Uh, I've also done some homemade ones. I've also done reviews on all the ones. Honeycomb boards or honeycomb boards. I even did a homemade one, which worked, but it was small. And this is a lot easier to, to work with. So as I said, this one here is made by X-Tool. Uh, there's one over there by Jakota. I've also got some from Nibble and one from Make Like Sun, because I like saying that. Honeycomb board is almost essential if you're going to be doing cutting to prevent getting scorching on the back side of your work. And if you are doing something that is not going to be painted or finished, that's going to be very important. And also air assist will greatly reduce and mostly eliminate scorching on the top side, whether you're doing cutting or engraving. When I'm doing engraving, and I do quite a bit of engraving in cedar, I always have the air assist on to uh, prevent scorching. Example of one of those cedar signs, and this was actually engraved on this particular laser. I just did it uh, this morning. So as you can see, there is absolutely no scorching on the front. What's the story on the delaser? Well, there's kind of a little running joke around here about me being a, such a big DeWalt fan because I'm on the DeWalt platform with my power tools. So everything is like uh, D this, D that. So we have D laser room, we have a D shop, D shed, D cetera. For example, right over here is D miter saw. Yeah, one of the features of this laser that I really like, and I wish everybody did it, is the ease of focus. Normally you've got some little tool, a cylinder or a plate or something you have to put between the uh, laser head and the bed. This has like a little kickstand. So I'm going to take this, this little scrap of two mil plywood here. Let's say we we're going to cut some, boy is that ever warped. That's what happens when you leave it sitting outside. I would never try to cut on this without weighting it down. But to focus this, little kickstand back here. You just drop down like so. Hopefully you can see that right back there. Little thumb screw over here. You let that drop down. Lock it back down. Fold the kickstand back up, and you're focused and ready to cut. And you're not going to lose the focus piece. That's a big problem, especially uh, those with the little tiny cylinders or even the little flat acrylic plates. It's very, very easy to misplace them. So I always have to make something to keep it with the laser and a little place to store it so I don't lose it. This here is self-storing. I like that. Okay, this is a non-sponsored video, by the way. X-Tool is not paying me to say anything nice, nor is any other company paying me to say anything negative. I just wanted to point out the reliability of these and how well they work. Are there any downsides to them? Yeah, there's a couple, in my opinion, anyway. One is the cable management, and that is why I added this drag chain here on this. And I've also got my air assist hose in there. Uh, you saw in the other one, and I think you can still see it, the air hose is constantly sticking up and I have to watch where it goes. So I'll be adding a drag chain to that one, just identical to how I did this one here. Uh, another little kind of, it's not a disadvantage really, but it's a quirk. And if this is going to be your only laser, this won't, ma this won't matter at all. But when this homes, the home position, as opposed to all of my other diode lasers, this is home, the upper left corner. All of my other diode lasers, home is the lower left corner. So I have to remember this when I am getting a project set up. Okay, another plus on the uh, x D1 is it does have limits and you can home it. So if I, here it's just in a random position, if I hit home, It auto homes. It's nice if you're going to be, especially if you're going to be working from absolute coordinates. Uh, in this particular here, I'm going to do, show you how I set this up to do a little project, but I'm going to be doing it from uh, what they call current position, and I'll be working from center. So I've got a little board sitting in here. I'm going to engrave that same uh, delaser room sign on this little cedar board here. 
and I'm going to show you how I get this set up and just how easy it is to get this all set. Okay, normally I would be doing this on uh, my layout grid which is underneath the honeycomb board there and I because I, then everything would be square and be very easy to find but let's say you don't have a layout board and normally I would also be doing this for absolute coordinates but in this case I am going to move this over you see there's a little red cross there and I have a mark on my board here where center is so I can just align that little red cross with the board then to find out if I am square with the world here since I'm not using my layout grid I can just frame this and make any adjustments as needed by watching where that travels. And I guess that's pretty good for being square. So then all I have to do is hit start. And away we go and I need to turn my air assist on for this one so I don't get any scorching. And I'm going to have to open a door shortly because this is going to make some smoke. And I need to get, it's fairly nice out, it's uh, like 54 today, so I could open a door. Um, which is about the temperature in here, so it's not like it's going to make the furnace run. You do need to vent, when you're, especially when you're working with materials that make smoke, you need to vent that outside. Either in a well ventilated area with an overhead door open like I'm about to do here, or have it in an enclosure with a uh, vent that's dedicated to vent outside. And there you can either build an enclosure or you could buy one of the pre-made ones. There's all kinds of options out there. But what I wanted to do here again was just kind of cover, is the Xtool D1 worth it? Is it any good? Well, yes it is. And again, this is not sponsored by Xtool or McBlock or anybody else. Just answering some viewer questions. And I did a little bit of a preview there for you of that new F1 laser that's going to be coming out that I'm kind of looking forward to getting my hands on, hopefully. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.